All right, everyone. Lately, I've been hearing a lot of people saying that the mini PCs with the Ryzen AI are too expensive. Well, let's take a look at today's star, the GMK EVO T1. It comes with Intel's flagship mobile processor, the Ultra 9 285H, and can be configured with up to 64 gigs of memory. When I first received this machine, I was a bit skeptical. Could such a small chassis really handle such powerful performance? Now, let's take a look at uh, how it performs. The first thing that catches my eye when unboxing is the uh, striking black and gold color scheme. The gold metal cover on top has a matte finish, giving it a, a premium feel both uh, visually and to the touch. However, the uh, black plastic on the bottom feels a bit ordinary in uh, comparison, prone to uh, fingerprint smudges. And I uh, accidentally scratched it with the uh, metal cover while assembly, which was a bit uh, disappointing. Overall, it's a slightly larger than a typical mini PCs, supporting both horizontal and vertical placements. It can also be mounted on the back of a monitor using the Visa mount included, which saves some space on the desk. The T1 features three USB ports with 5 Gbps speeds at the front. The far right USB-C ports support 20 Gbps speeds and also DP outputs, with all ports capable of reaching their maximum speeds. Its display interface is well balanced, featuring a full-size DP 1.4 port and an HDMI 2.1 port. Using these two ports, you can easily connect two 8K 60Hz displays. Additionally, there are two 2.5G Ethernet ports and a Gen 4 X4 OcuLink interface. Though I don't have an OcuLink device to test the speed, having an extra high-speed interface is always a plus. The only downside is the lack of an SD card slot, which is uh, inconvenient for someone like me who uh, frequently transfers photos and videos. The power adapter is a pleasant surprise, being half the size of the typical 120W adapter, making it much more portable. We can switch between different effects using the uh, fan mode button on the right, or hold it down to turn it off. However, I don't think it's necessary to turn it off specifically as we rarely see its lighting effect in uh, most cases. By removing four screws, we can easily open it completely. On the left side of the motherboard are the M.2 slots. After removing the original hard drive, we can see the WLAN module below. On the right side are two DDR5 sodium slots pre-installed with the 232 gigs, 5600 MHz memory modules. After removing the uh, motherboard screws, we can see the uh, heat sink specifically designed for the processor. It does not fully cover the entire motherboard, but there's uh, no need to worry. I'll show you why in the uh, thermal testing. This cooling solution is sufficient for the uh, Ultra 9, though it may uh, struggle slightly. GMK is aware that deploying an AI model is a significant barrier for most users, especially on uh, Intel-based platforms. Therefore, GMK has integrated the uh, AI PC tool into the system. After launching the software, it automatically loads the uh, built-in AI model. Here, we loaded a DeepSeq 32 billion 4-bit quantized model, achieving approximately 15 tokens per second. While it may not match the uh, capabilities or response speed of uh, online AI, the uh, biggest advantage of a local model is that uh, you can safely feed it sensitive documents for data analysis data summarization, or answering simple questions. If you check its GPU memory usage at this point, you will see that the memory usage is comparable to what an RTX 5090 level GPU could handle. But now it runs on integrated graphics, which is uh, quite cost-effective. GMK has set the three different performance modes in the BIOS. By uh, adjusting these three modes, you can uh, switch the uh, processor's long duration packaging power limit between 45 to 70 watts. The 80 watt mentioned in the promotional materials refers to the short duration packaging power limit. Therefore, even if you set the BIOS and Windows to a performance mode, it can only operate at the 70 watt for extended periods, not 80 watt. First, we tested the CPU performance using Cinebench. As shown in the results, the single core performance of the CPU is very similar across the three modes. This means that uh, in everyday use, you will find it difficult to notice the differences between the three performance modes. However, if you use it for tasks that require multi-core performance, such as uh, video editing or compiling, the uh, differences between the three modes become more pronounced. We also tested the GPU performance using 3DMark, and the uh, benchmark scores were quite strong for an integrated GPU, even approaching those of a GTX 1650. 
We ran Doom Dark Ages, which could only achieve console level frame rates at uh, 1080p resolution. If we switched to less demanding games like a CSGO or Valorant, they could run smoothly at a 1080p resolution. We first used a performance mode to compare temperature performance between upright and horizontal orientations. At a room temperature of 26 degrees Celsius, there was virtually no difference between the two. At this point, the noise level was neither overly loud nor sharp. The pre-installed SSD as seen in previous teardowns is from Macron and is a Gen 4 X4 model, delivering strong performance in a CDM test. However, this is a product using a QSC flash memory. If we increase the data volume in the CDM test, its performance will not be good. Considering that this is a highly expandable mini PC, I believe it is also a good choice as a computing unit in the home lab. So we also tested its uh, transcoding performance in Jellyfin. Here, we use a QSV hardware acceleration to transcode 4K HDR HEVC encoded video to AV1. Jellyfin successfully called on two video decoder units in the GPU for decoding, and the power consumption is around 55 watts. We also tried rendering a 9 minutes long DaVinci project using this PC. Compared to our PC, the EVO T1 was indeed much faster. We then continued rendering a project with an extensive special effect, and it was even slower than our desktop with a 3060 GPU. We then referenced the proxy timeline performance, which was very close to our rendering performance. If it's just a simple video clips, if it is just simple video clips, it runs smoothly. However, once it involves a large number of special effects animations in the calculation, its performance becomes poor. In summary, the GMK EVO T1 is a very innovative mini PC. Its strengths are evident. It has an abundance of ports, decent performance, practical AI features, and is particularly suited for those who need multi-screen setups, handle sensitive data, and value a clean desktop. However, it has its own drawbacks. QLC SSDs experience performance degradation with a sustained writes. Complex rendering efficiency is average and the bottom plastic feels uh, less premium. But if you are seeking top tier gaming performance or professional grade rendering, you might want to uh, consider other options. All right, if you like this review, please hit the like button and subscribe. This is World Focus from China. See you next time.